when dealing in the realms of punk rock and metal, occasionally you'll come across a stone that needs to be turned that's a bit darker than the rest. And this is what's happening with this story, because this does get fucking dark, it does get brutal, and not in a good way, because this shit is fucked up. So, Jean Pascal, um, he's a guy who's done a lot of artwork for different metal bands, um, it just spans across the entire genre of metal. I've looked up some of his stuff after hearing this. And he does things from like fucking like uh, black metal bands. Like I think it was Immortal. Up to, you know, other bands that are a little bit more happy. A little bit more cheery like Dragon Force. So he's done artwork for all those different kinds of things. And he is an amazing artist. But this whole story, it just, it just seems fucking weird. It doesn't add up. Um... The timelines are fucking weird to begin with, and then the action taken by the police is also weird. There's no actual details in it. I mean, there are details, but it's not the kind of stuff that you would fucking, you would think, you know? Like, you fucking watch CSI, and then there's, like, this whole fucking timeline of intricate shit that happens. This shit is just, like, fucking really loose and really fucking, you know, just kind of like somebody just pencil with the whole motherfucker. Um, a part of that could also be because the whole thing was translated from French into English. So a lot of it, you know, will probably get lost in translation. Um, I haven't seen the the actual French uh, version of it. I've just seen two, um, two renditions of it. One from Loudwire and then one from... Um, I can't remember what the other site is. But I saw two different stories and essentially it's like Barbatum. So, you know, it's just word for word, the same shit on each one. The dates are different, though. Um, one of them says the 29th and the 30th, and the other one says April 1st and April 2nd. I'm leaning more towards April 1st and April 2nd because they put, um, I think it was Tuesday and Wednesday, and then I looked at the map, and I was, or not the map, I looked at the calendar and realized that those dates were wrong. But, um, you know, that's kind of getting, not necessarily off topic, but that's a whole nother fucking thing. So... Jean Pascal, he's accused of uh, murdering his 80-year-old dad and, you know, just fucking cutting him open, disemboweling him, all that shit. It also said that there was an, um, a fucking arrow mark or an arrow hole through his head and it also looked like he had been beaten with something. Doesn't say what specifically. It says an unknown object. It could have been anything from a fucking pot or a pan it could have been like a fucking bottle. It could have been something. But, you know, that does seem pretty fucking grim. Especially the dude's fucking 80. And this whole coronavirus thing is going around killing people who are elderly. And that's kind of, you know, what it seems like the age demographic that would be, you know, most at risk for that. And then you get fucking, just fucking cut open. Um, anyways... So it says, um, fuck, I can barely even read this. We already had a lot to drink. I was planning on doing this shit in the morning, but the day dragged on and, you know, I'm still working, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, but unfortunately. Um, it says, uh, the whole thing happened on April 1st. I put a little, uh, asterisk on there because that was the 29th, um, from the days that it was said, again, this whole thing gets a little fucking dicey. And it says, um, that was the night that he ran his car off of the cliff, which was also the night that his dad was killed. So he drove his car off the cliff, but he wasn't inside it. He wasn't driving it. I'm assuming that they put like a fucking block or a brick or a bar or something on there onto the acceleration pedal, drove it off the cliff to make it look like he had killed himself. And then they wouldn't be able to put the timelines together. I'm guessing or it could have been a suicide attempt and he just like bitched out at the last minute and fucking jumped out after he had fucking, you know, snapped to and realized what he did. So that had happened. Neighbors had checked it out to see if anybody was ejected from the vehicle to see if anybody had, you know, ran off or anything like that. So that's what happened. It's unclear on, you know, the timeline of these things because there's not like, you know, 1159, this happened. And then, you know, it jumps to the next day. Well, the fucking thing that I was reading, it says, you know, on the next day, April 2nd, which could be March 31st, 
Um, he also tried to commit suicide by jumping off of a bridge. And, you know, he jumped off the bridge. Either the water wasn't deep enough or it was too deep. And the point is, he didn't die. So firefighters had recovered him, picked him up. They took him to the station, and that's where he went. So, that's basically all I wrote down of all the stuff that I could read. Like I said, it's very dicey, it's very fucking thin. There's not a whole lot of detail. There's not a lot of stuff that you can really go off of. Point is, one day his dad is alive. The next day, not only is he dead, he's cut open. Organs fucking ripped out, beaten either before or after death. And had an arrowhead put in, or yeah, had an arrowhead fucking lodged in his head. Then the next day, dude tries to commit suicide after already previously throwing his car off the cliff. Um, a lot of shit in that doesn't add up. But then again, you know, I'm not there. I can't say exactly what happened. If all of that stuff happened, you know, it was a home invasion. They broke in, did all that stuff, and then stole the dude's car and drove off and took off and fucking did all that. And then the next day, dude's fucking, you know, he's just, you know dying inside so he just fucking decides to kill himself it could also be that kind of story but again it is very unclear i need to find the original french print of the stuff um try and read it as best i can because i know you know a couple of languages i know american i know english a little bit and for those of you who don't know those are two basically they're different languages i mean they're the same thing but they are different it's the same thing as Spanish and Mexican. They're the same, but they're, you know, different. So, I know English, I know this, I know French, I know Spanish, Portuguese, a little bit of Italian. I know a bit of different stuff from different stuff. But, I haven't seen the original thing of this. This whole fucking thing, it's just, it's just strange, you know. All along, or along the whole thing, it fucking basically points that dude as the bad guy but then in the second scenario that i was saying if it was a home invasion this shit happened that had happened and then somebody fucking took off with the car and drove it off and tried to fucking hide the evidence that's another fucking path that could have happened and you know whenever you read this you don't think the second thing maybe it is the second thing maybe this guy is just fucking innocent completely fucked and the whole world is going to look a different way because he happens to be a metalhead. He happens to be an artist. He fucking draws fucked up shit like that all the time. Maybe they knew who this guy was and they wanted to fucking pin something on him. Not necessarily pin something on him, but get away with murder. And that was the perfect way to do it. I need a fucking beer. This shit is driving me nuts. Now, that being said, there is your second scenario. The first one, the media is going to paint it out that way. That's just the way it is. Ever since the 80s, fucking Ozzy and all that shit, that shit's been going that way. And then fucking in the 90s, you know, you had punks and then all oh, punks, blah, 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 this and that. <clears throat> Even in movies, they try to paint punks and metalheads out as bad people. It just doesn't add up to me. I don't see it happening. I mean, there is a chance because people get unhinged. The whole world is going fucking nuts right now because this virus shit, this fucking quarantine, this you can't fucking step out of your place or you get shot bullshit. For me, I am able to go out. I am able to work both of my jobs because they are considered essential. And here in New Mexico where I am, uh, it's a stay-at-home advisory, so... I'm able to go to my day job, which is apartment maintenance, very, very essential because shit breaks, shit catches on fire, shit floods, and it fucking happens. Then my second job, food delivery, also essential because there are old people that can't get out and they need to do fucking get their food and do their thing. And then there's other people, like let's just say morbidly obese, which happens to be defended here in the U.S., so... You can be as fat as you want and somebody's going to take care of you and I happen to be that person who's going to fucking get you fed and get you going to the next day. 
um, lots of people just can't fucking go out. Lots of people fear of going out. So there is a job for me doing that as well. But this whole fucking thing is just absolutely insane. If this guy did do it, that is extremely fucked up and extremely damning on all of us. Anybody who wears fucking black every day, spikes, studs, fucking crazy hairstyles, fucking shaved down mohawks, whatever. It is fucking, it is going to be a blow to everybody. Just like fucking, well, it didn't get covered all that much on the news, but that fucking dude who did that mass shooting, uh, I can't even remember where exactly, but he was in a fucking uh, grindcore, no, uh, porno grind band. I was expecting that to get really bad for the metal and punk community, but surprisingly it didn't, I guess because he was some fucking left-wing lunatic, and then the whole media is left-wing, so I guess they kind of covered that, but, um, it's just fucking insane, man, this whole fucking planet's going to shit, and we are here in the fucking front row watching this shit happen go down before our very eyes, <coughs> I'm hoping that this fucking story is the thing that I was saying, well, not necessarily hoping, because, you know, it's still tragic, but I want it to be something a little less fucked up, a little bit less demented, tormented, the shit that um, has been printed already, and everybody is basically pointing to. I'm hoping that it's not that. If it is that, there is fucking an army of punk rockers, an army of metalheads, an army of hardcore kids, that all we do is just listen to music, work fucking hard every day, get shit done, and this, there's not even a chance of that happening. But all it takes is one fucking story to fuck it up for everybody. So, that being said, everybody keep your head up high, fucking stay as normal as you can, even though there is no fucking normal. Um, just don't go out and kill anybody. <laughs> That's basically all I'm saying. You listen to heavy metal, you listen to punk rock, you listen to hardcore to get some aggression out so that it's not bottled up inside you. You're an artist, do your art to get your poisons out. Fucking, if you're like me, drink, get drunk, wake up the next day and fucking hit it hard. That's all I can really say. I mean, fuck, this whole thing has just had me all fucking twisted all day. I was planning on doing a fucking coronavirus video play this video about fucking tunes to jam out, stuff to bring your spirits up, and then, fuck. <sighs> Been working on this fucking video for a week and a half, and then this shit happens. So, I will catch y'all tomorrow. I may just fucking throw everything all in at the same time, get this fucking video done, jump onto the next one, and then keep going and going and going. Till then, hit that like, subscribe, um, comment, fucking follow, uh, bells and shit, whatever the hell, um, do all those things, stick around because I will be around and I will catch y'all in the next video.